everyone for for coming tonight. We're really stoked about you know, wanting to find out about what we, <laughs> we've been up to. <laughs> um, so our talk uh, is called On the Fringe. <laughs> and uh, fringe is being something that we really love. <laughs> um, we like, so um, the reason we like them is because they have many possibilities. They speak to our geographic location and they speak about childhood memories and to our sartorial predilections. Mm -hmm. um, and to us, being on the fringe describes the way we practice art at the fringe, which may might imply a secondary pursuit, a marginalised position, but for us it's not that way at all. The fringe is making its way to the centre, metaphorically, in our practice and also in reality. And as you will see later, the experience and sample we have developed here are also becoming more central to the way we practice. Reserving some space outside the business of delivering projects allows all the good things that art brings to emerge. Um, and we, we show you here some projects that we, we do as architects. The Fringe is where we live and breathe, no matter what type of pro project we engage in. I practice, um, and I'm talking now super pleased, but the practice that Sue and I have together as, um, as artists started in 1985 when we began collaborating on what we call fringe projects, meaning projects that we would do after hours while working for Williamsburg. We haven't got names out of those. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're too old to sort of show you anyone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, Williamsburg, um, Williamsburg has a, a very strong connection with the yeah. Workshop having done our renovations and yeah. um, Peter Williams was out here for many years. That's so right. That's right. Lovely yeah. This project occupied our mind in different ways and subsequently led us to formalise our interests through further t training in fine art for Sue <coughs> and through collaborative research in my case. Um, but it took a more permanent form of the, this, this pursuit that we were um, going for together, it took a more pol a permanent collaboration in 2005 uh, with the work Introduced Species, which is a site specific, and you'll see it here uh, on the that, so it's yeah. Nice. So it's that one. The the previous photographs is of the uh, of an article that um, where our work appeared together with other artists at that particular show in Werribee Park Mansion. It's so the uh, which is the Lemprier Helen Lemprier Sculpture mm -hmm. Award. Um, the um, the work consisted uh, of. Uh, coloured plastic threads, and if you've got in mind the um, the bread ties that you use for you know to 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 seal your packets of bread, uh, we we um, we got hold of about four kilometres of it, and um, uh, in sort of enormous reels that you can imagine, and managed to weave those through a, um, a kind wire. of chicken wire yeah. matrix matrix, and then bury all that in real brass with and then managed to kind of pop up all the blue bits <laughs> in the shape of leaves to kind of, you know... The fallen leaves. Yeah. yeah, fallen leaves, that sort of one. So the, the reason we use this colour blue, which is sort of the ubiquitous blue of, um, of kind of plastic, um, to signify artificiality and modernity. And, um, and we chose to articulate uh, this particular work in this leaf pattern to kind of mimic, uh, you know, mimic the nature that we were kind of slowly uh, losing through uh, introduced species. Um, so uh, little did we know that this work was going to lead us to the Australian Tapestry Workshop one day. Many more collaboration followed and centred around the, the issue of the environment. Um, we observe uh, in um, sorry, the next slide. Mm -hmm. um, in we observed that the plastic land pierce leaves that um, you often see at the side of the road, uh, where there's new plantings and revegetation re re project, would offer us a potential at um, Yering Station, uh, at the Yering Station show, 
um, to reinterpret it and, and add colour to it. Uh, we call this work Shaw to Grow, as in Shaw to number, grow, kind of playing on this idea of um, uh, advertising and um, because in fact there's no plants inside these things. It's just a, it's just a symbolic um, act. Uh, and, and I think also because those um, three cornered sleeves have become signifiers in their own right. You know, you only had to see them in the landscape mm -hmm. and you knew what they meant. Mm -hmm. And there was a sort of um, beauty in the swathes that you saw across the landscape. And so we thought we'll just push that visual that we think of, you know, that we see and know it's land can push it a bit further and do something else with it. Yeah. But still referencing nature. Yeah, and fact, it, it, and again, you know, in that kind of referencing the environment, we, we were um, looking at um, the kind of um, uh, consciousness raising uh, that land care projects um, did in the, for the community. Um, the next project we, we worked on was, is called Yours Forever. And it was for the Lawn Sculpture Biennale. Uh, and it's 4,000 uh, recycled plastic bags, uh, which articulate, uh, articulated in three axes, as in kiss, kiss, kiss. That's why it's yours forever. And again, um, commenting on the fact that plastic bags, unfortunately, when we use them, they are for our, you know going to be going to stay. The ironic bit was that oh, unfortunately, I was just oh, going to say there's a little weaving corollary to corollary um, that to secure this, this is also sort of woven onto a wire matrix and then buried. Yeah. Unfortunately, we for us <laughs> and, and for the organisers of this, yes, we said it. Make sure it doesn't wash away. Yeah. <laughs> they were very nervous because they, so this, no, this no, was no. the first event. It's so deep. There's no it, way it's going to wash away. But of course, the king tide <laughs> came. The tide. tide. <laughs> 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 so we, the poor, the poor organisers, only managed, barely managed to to uh, retrieve the work before it all sort of was about to wash away to see. So I forgot to mention that uh, in Shore to Grow we won the second prize for, for that work um, at the Yang Station. So buoyant from that um, work we, we, um, we went back to Yang Station next, the year after and with this work called Weed, and this time we used uh, those road reflectors, you know, the yellow and red road reflectors you often see um, to uh, the side of the road so you don't sort of veer into the, the ditch at night. Um, and this kind of, this work started our real love affair with re reflectivity. Um, in the, in the form of road signage material, headlights, for cars, various other safety devices, which we realised would provide a rich palette of colours, textures and refraction to add to, our, to, to the work. We continued uh, using the materials we discovered in Weed in many other installations, including this one, which was called Web, and it's in the location of uh, the Federation uh, Federation Square car park. Again, another weaving metaphor. Uh, we chose the spider and its web as um, for um, because of its engineering marvel, I suppose, and because it's kind of also a metaphor for never-ending work. And um, it's kind of um, it seemed to us appropriate location in this kind of not forgotten place but it, it's a sort of subterranean space which is not the glamour of the the federation square you know uh, uh, environments but it's where people park their car together. And, and another little thread about mm -hmm. colonization i think that spiders will mm -hmm. sort of colonize dusty corners um 
Yeah, we've got a fly at the bottom. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's the script. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm just thinking of the spider. I thought, oh, the fly should be. It's actually a little job. A little job that we did for a friend of ours, another artist called Jason Waterhouse, which some of you may know. The next slide shows this thing we got into for a while, which uh, was a, a, a two-part uh, artwork. This badges and then the corresponding street signs that came with it. And the um, uh, it was for a show at uh, Docklands called Contempora, which now doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. Docklands. Um, at Docklands, sorry. Docklands um, does Contempora. Yeah, Contempora. Mm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> She she crosses the teeth and <laughs> So what we tried to do with this work was to kind of um, have a have a humorous you know go at street signs and the way they tell us to do things. Except in this case, because they were in an environment where there was a lot of um, you know multi-story you know residential development and and quite a bit of. Um, uh, uh, office buildings and whatnot. We decided that these signs would talk to people um, to tell them to not forget, you know, going trekking or um, what's the next one, or or would say to people, look, you know, you've been asked to walk on water every day. We understand that you know that that's an impossibility, or uh, you know, try and have some time off and do a bit of this is called guru. Uh, <laughs> try and have some time off and have a bit of a break from what you do. And I think we've got one more, which is smelling the roses. You know, <laughs> go for a walk and smell the roses. Um, as a consequence of this work, and you can see that we start, you know, we started to get a real urban. You know, we we we're, we're in love with the with the with the city. And we work in the city. We work, you know, we do buildings that are located in the city, and um, and we, you know, our artwork is very much trying to comment on what's happening there. So um, Future Melbourne uh, gave us the next opportunity, which was um, it's actually a work that um, uh, was displayed at Digital Harbour, which is also in Docklands. And we decided to fix, you know, to kind of um, hack basically <laughs> the software that um, that these standard, you know, road signs come in. And instead of saying things like, uh, you know, it's closed from works or um, you know, there'll be some Sunday activity here, we made uh, the sign say things like um, stop um, or seek, seek alternative route or give way to your heart, um, and playing on the idea that, you know, they're both kind of, road, they look like road signs, but they don't, they're not road signs. So the work um, kind of, <coughs> at this point, and well, with the Jane project that we just showed you before, the, the, the round um, road signs. That, that and was called overall um, Jane can walk, I think, so yeah. it's the whole story in that Jane. Yeah, and, and you know, with a company badges so you could walk around and you know, you, you know, you had your favourite badge that corresponded to that. We um, started to uh, talk to our audience more directly. So, um, you know, actually trying to interact with, with, with people uh, rather than just um, place images in front of them, but actually, you know, sort of having a dis have a discourse with them. So the next work which we we were we did for um, the um, the first was it the first yeah. urban uh, yeah. Melbourne Prize which uh, as you, you some of you might know alternates uh, in different years from music um, literature. literature and 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 sculpture and and particularly concentrates on urban on urban work urban sculpture. This one's called uh, Watching You Are Watching Me. And it's 500 chairs arranged in a, in a semicircular kind of amphitheater space, um, indicating that you know, people actually wanted to sit in these chairs, <laughs> which 
my room, yeah. which was a bit of a problem because, because some of them were on top of, you know, yeah, we, stacked, stacked. <laughs> yeah, we stacked them on top of each other, so <laughs> kind of like it poses a bit of a issue there, and then they all ended up being blown away in the, you know, <laughs> in the <sunset. laughs> But nevertheless, we made the point that there was an audience and there was a spectator. Uh, I'm sorry, there was a, yeah, there was a, an actor and a spectator, and uh, and again sort of tried to um, uh, work with with that sort of duality idea, with that idea of the relation, relational relational um, uh, work. Um, as we went on, we we looked at um, Ballarat. We we were lucky enough to to um, get a commission in Ballarat. Um, which is this work, which we call Gold Fever. And this work is, is in Drury Lane, one of the lanes that, go, that is off uh, the main mall, and obviously speaks about Ballarat's gold, you know, past, and um, um, again, employing, we employed um, some of our, those reflectors that you've seen in, in, um, in some of the other projects. Um, uh, and it's a well-travelled route, um, so it, um, the, the graph that you see in yellow there, that represents the years in which gold went up in... in um, oh, it's the, it's the it's price of gold since, yeah. they, <coughs> since they discovered it in Ballarat. Mm -hmm. and, and since they deregulated the... because it used to be regulated... Because the, the spike uh, is 1990, so the, yeah. and it went completely nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, um, sorry, where am I? Okay. Do you want to go to the next yep. thing? So I don't know where I'm at. Thank you. <laughs> Some of this work coming back into the built work. Yeah, we, we um, uh, so some of the, these projects that we showed you uh, are mostly uh, our own artwork and run art practice, but then that art practice is, becomes integrated with, with our you know, architecture practice. And, and some of the work that, that you see here is for things like courtyards in buildings that we've done, or uh, um, foyers, or uh, study areas. Um, we even got a column up there which is made of uh, glazed bricks, which is in one of our um, community housing projects where basically we try and enrich um, the, the architectural, the, the sort of purely design work with, with, uh, with a sort of uh, work that sort of is more from an art perspective. Mm. And I think a, a palette that sort of became more varied in its materiality, there was a focus on that as well as colour. So, um, just... Oh, sorry. Some of this, <laughs> she knows better than me because she put the... the I wasn't in the office today, unfortunately. She yes. just put the, the talk together. And so this is, uh, this is coming along. <laughs> Heaps and bounds. Um, we decided at some point that we wanted to formalise our... Um, I mean, Sue, Sue's um, had further training, apart from her architectural training, she's um, uh, had further training early on as a, in, uh, in, in art, in fine art. But um, I'd kind of left um, that fine art thread back somewhere in my... You know, I used in Italy where I attended art school, so I wasn't, you know, I, formally uh, I hadn't trained. And at one stage we both decided, God knows how, that we would, um, that we would end up uh, uh, with a Bachelor of Fine Arts at RMIT in gold and silver smithing. Um, uh, and this sort of has been a real... Uh, a real uh, revelation in some ways to me particularly because um, um, it gave us the opportunity to really interact with material and process. Um, the site specificity that we had, had um, 
practiced with the projects that you've seen became more um, uh, aligned with the body, you know, the, the work being on the body. Uh, and uh, the making process um, has been characterized by I think, many ways of starting, uh, of st many starting points. Mm -hmm. Um, the thing that we've enjoyed, well, you know, both I think we've enjoyed the, the most is sort of not knowing where it would take us because as designers we've always had a brief, you know, a client, a brief, a sort of an end project of some sort that we, we need to imagine, but it's, it's, it's more kind of, um, it doesn't leave, uh, there is a creative process in there, but it, it doesn't leave, um, any, you with any ex uh, direct experience of the material of the process as a creative process. It, it, you know, you work, you're working with others who are then making the object, so it's quite a different um, experience. And, and the, the, um, the fact that we're actually um, uh, using uh, various materials and some of these are the reflective things that we've, uh, you know, we've um, uh, both enjoy working with um, meant that uh, there's a thinking process that is through making rather than the thinking process that we do which is through drawing and, um, and, and, and watching. So our collaboration continued at RMIT. Um, and some and of this is just showing um, some sort of fairly loose experiments with materials. Again the reflectivity, the reflectors, the body, um, some sort of test pieces with jewellery, same materials, and then some more resolved pieces that have been done more recently. Yeah, so our collaboration has continued um, with various shows. Um, uh, uh, this was uh, one that we, uh, uh, we, we did last year, two years ago, 2015, at Anne Gallery, and it was called Put It On. Um, then uh, we also curated some work for uh, Remake with a, a whole lot of um, our colleagues from, from RMIT. Um, and it kind of, you know, this experience has reaffirmed our belief in, the, in collaboration and the collaborative process. So we then uh, decided to more become, to formalise that and establish this super pleased thing that we, we're doing now, um, uh, which engages us in collaboration, not just um, you know, with ourselves, but also with a number of other people. Mm. Um, do you want to oh, yes. take over? Okay. So the next bit that we are going to talk about is the, I'm not sure whether I want to, I'll go back for a minute, um, was our residency here. Um, and uh, when you were tapestry workshop and had admired the work and had heard of it from other artists that had enjoyed residencies here and um, were lucky enough to be accepted. Um, and as Elias alluded to, one of the things that we thought about a lot during the residency <coughs> because we have had this structure around how uh, your, your professional training sort of sets you up for a certain way of thinking about and starting a project and you often fall back on that, I think, because, you know, that's what you used to. And as she said, you know, you've got the structure of client, brief, budget, um, and, and the context. Um, and we've sort of felt with the art practice, you have to work out your own starting point and you can't rely on external forces to sort of frame what you're going to do. And a lot of the projects that we've seen to date, not the jewellery, we still had things like the competition that that was sort of framework for us and it still sort of provided um, something that we were familiar with, you know, there was a deadline and we can't do anything without a deadline. <laughs> um, <laughs> and coming here was very much, there, were, there wasn't any expectation um, apart from probably doing this. Um, and you come in here and it's like being in a lolly shop, you see all those colours and you just go, oh my god, this is just fabulous. Mm -hmm. and, and the ambience, you know, the, the feeling here is, is 
so serene. It's lovely. You, it's, <laughs> you just, oh, where do I get? How we can come back? <laughs> um, and so that was that was good. But we're just thinking about those starting points. You know, how how do architects tackle a project? How does an artist enter in the idea? How does writer start a book and someone start a song? Not sure that we've got the answers, but that was part of the playing. I think we were thinking about that. So we started just. Messing around with the with the um, threads, um, thinking about the weaving process, um, changing you know the warp and the weft a bit um, from the more traditional. I'm sure other people here have done similar things, and you know we did a little bit of the knitting, Nancy, and I think probably every second thing that starts off with something like that too. It's a natural thing. Um, we tried making. We thought we might make pipe cleaners at one stage, that's what those little very, very <laughs> things are. That not really not so no, we leave that to the industrial yeah. process. <laughs> but, the, but the fringe started appearing, as we um, alluded to. Um, and then we also, we tried to make more sort of twine or rope with the string, uh, with the thread. Again, medium success, but then, you know, thinking about rope, we started using rope and then just binding it like that. and that. Um, and we've got some examples of that. Yeah, that's some of those things. They're, 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 you know, they're samples very much. Um, and then, uh, and we also, you know, looked closely at what was happening here and, and thought about the way that you um, find the colours and document that and line them all up and sort of doing some sort of experiments with looking at these things and finding the colours. And that was fun. Yeah, and we're there was just, we're just in awe of uh, the way um, they, you interpret um, yeah. work or interpret um, <coughs> into into tapestry, and how um, it's such an incredible skill of observation as well as of the making. But the observation is just you know yeah. it is is fantastic. It, I mean, it just it blew us. And, this, mine, and the you know. samples are so beautiful in themselves. Yeah. So it's really Some of all the art samples are artwork so yeah. in itself. Yeah, but yeah, what we yes. mean is, you know, <laughs> yes. we've seen now. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing that we did, I'm not sure whether it's super successful, but <laughs> are we super pleased? Um, we, we thought about the process as well. And we tried to devise a way of doing a collaborative weaving exercise. And so um, this we set up two looms. Um, on either oh, side of, of, thing, on either side of the yeah. table. Yeah. yeah. Um, and did this piece where it you wove around and around and around. So you ended up with two pieces and then the idea was that those and using thread, uh, the cord has got reflective bits in it. And then when you cut it, you could sort of wear it over your shoulders like that. We haven't shown you those. <laughs> We're wearing those. It looks pretty ordinary. <laughs> well, we you'll, see, you'll see there's a little video at the end of this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How that yeah. So, so that was fun too, just sort of thinking about the weaving process and how can we make that truly collaborative. Um, um, and I think that's probably the main things really. Uh, the other thing I was just going to say is that Again, probably like most artists, there's a stage when you look at your table and you think, oh, I've got hundreds of spools out here. <laughs> I've got that colour and that colour and maybe this colour. Because it's just <laughs> the library of colour is mm. intoxicating. Um, and I think that's, uh, yeah, as I In said. In conclusion, we just want to say thank you. Yes. Do you want to say that? Um, <laughs> shall I read that bit? Because I yeah, want to know <laughs> what we love. The, um, the Calm Studio, so welcoming the communal morning teas. Quizmeister Pam and the chats <laughs> and the um, general serenity that pervades this artistic oasis. oasis. Um, we swooned over the extensive coloured threads um, and listened to Chris talk about how Tony, the colour wizard, can always get the hue just right. We've had some conversations about whether it's hue or chroma or what, <laughs> but that's a whole other conversation, I think. We've been excited to hear that a new generation of weavers is learning the particular set of skills required for weaving on the enormous looms here, and enjoy the privilege of seeing how the work of an external artist is carefully and artistically translated into a tapestry. And the test pieces that check colour matching, texture options and threads 
thicknesses were just as um, exciting. Um, and then, um, probably the bit that we loved the most, um, perhaps after the spell binding colours, was seeing people with years of practice apply their skill effortlessly and beautifully. Uh, and there was a review in the paper recently about a film. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and that people played when we weren't here. <laughs> but someone <laughs> conveniently took some photos. <laughs> anyway, this, this film review talked about wanting the audience to um, think through their body as they watch this film. And I thought that sort of captures what people do here, really. They are so in tune with the process and what they're doing that there's this beautiful synergy. So thank you. <laughs>